Hello, Sir David the Bard. I'm coming to you from the LDS Social Services building, which is nearly deserted. <laughs> it's by Desert Industries, and DI is flourishing. <laughs> A lot of poor people. Anyway, I told you once before, and I've got the link for you. The LDS Church Social Services System is no longer in the adoption business. Now, I'm old. I'm old, and so I have a lot of history in the Mormon Church. When I was growing up about 15, 16, 17 years old, the um, Mormon Church <laughs> captured Indians, and I can say Indians because I'm old. They may have been Native Americans, but they were Indians, especially Navajo. I later on went on to BYU, and you'd see Navajos walking everywhere. <laughs> You can always tell a Navajo Indian because the wife has to walk 10 feet behind the man and she carries all the shit. <laughs> he carries nothing. You go, there's the Navajo. Uh, I wanted to join that tribe, but I didn't have enough hair. Anyway, I used to drive uh, for Utah Valley Transit, which is a bus company that serves BYU. And uh, one day we were assigned to <laughs> transport Indians. <laughs> I learned so much in one day about the Native American way. We drove over to the dorms. They're torn down now, Deseret Towers. And uh, we were waiting for the Indians to come out and load on the bus. Usually five or six buses would show up and people would just, you know, come to the curb and jump on the bus. <laughs> Not one damn soul came out. <laughs> all the drivers are looking at each other and go, were they all translated? Where the hell are the Indians? <laughs> Did Custer show up? <laughs> anyway, we were there for two hours on the curb before the first one came out. And we said to her, where's the rest of your people? She says, well, they're getting up, but they've been in bed. <laughs> it's like 1130. Anyway, we took the uh, Indians when we finally rounded them up. Not to the reservation, but over to uh, Salt Lake City. And we dumped them in Salt Lake City. They're supposed to have a, a cultural experience. We didn't load those buses until midnight. <laughs> Once you let an Indian go, he's gone. <laughs> She's gone. Time means nothing. They don't wear watches. They look at the sun. When the sun goes down, they will get on the bus. So anyway, I've had a little bit of experience with the Indians. Well, back in those days, the Mormon church would capture the Indians and say they're Lamanites, they're special people, they're dark-skinned, but and they're loathsome, and, and they sat on the fence like the blacks did, and if they read the Book of Mormon, they'll turn white. <laughs> they were all reading the Book of Mormon on the bus, Bam, I look in the mirror and I see hundreds of Indians turning white. <coughs> anyway, the Mormon church really focused on the Indians in the 60s and the 70s. Well, the 80s come along. <laughs> the Indians are on reservations. They don't want the Mormons walking around with Book of Mormon and triple combination. So the Mormon church quietly backed away from their Indian experience but it was fun for me now the same things going on with adoption back in the old days and adopt a, a child that was uh, born we're going to be born out of wedlock and the LDS the bishop and the state president would hush it up and send the mom over to social services well mom would be pressured into giving her child up and then social services, LDS social services, would let the child be adopted by only a Mormon family that was temple worthy and could take the baby to the temple. <laughs> Where she'd have health and enable, marrow and the bone, strength and noise, etc. Well, it was very discriminatory and it really took a lot of uh, mother's babies away and the Mormon church won't help any mother that is a single parent. You know, little Miley, I've had her on the show here a couple of times. I think she's going to be my guest host. She and the Allison are fighting for position. But uh, Miley's mother was LDS. 
And when she went to the Mormon church, they told her to go get screwed. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. She said, I already did. I already did. And they said, well, it's not good enough. <laughs> We're going to screw you again. <laughs> I don't want twins. I don't want twins. Anyway, my precious little Miley Jane is an illegitimate child. Mormon. And her mother got the hell out of the Mormon church because they tried to put the child up for adoption. And I would take her in a second. I would take that baby in a second. I've never had a baby that is so good. She seldom cries. She laughs. She plays. She's trying to walk now. I'll get her on the show here in the next couple of days. Anyway, now the Mormon church says, well, the $20,000 that we charge for each adoption or more, we don't get any more. We're getting more and more poor. We're getting really poor. So they stopped the uh, adoption process uh, at LDS Social Services. So they just excommunicate the mom <laughs> and hope the hell federal government picks her up on food stamps. Now I just made a statement and, and I'll back it up here in a few minutes with another video. And that is the Mormon church is going broke. It is going broke. They have a temple, a new temple that's going up in France in France but guess what no angel Moroni <laughs> that damn gold is too expensive and he's too damn big we're not putting him up there we're just going to put up tithing receipt boxes <laughs> so angel Moroni ain't there the church hasn't said anything about it the bard will say something you remember a couple of months ago maybe a year ago in Cebu, uh, the angel Moroni did the hokey pokey <laughs> on top of the Cebu temple when they had a, a typhoon there and he turned around, I don't know how many degrees, but he didn't want his face in the wind. <laughs> he put his butt in the wind, so that didn't go good. Well, down there in uh, South Jordan, their temple, uh, Moroni, was hit by lightning. <laughs> he turned black! <laughs> there was a black angel Moroni on a Mormon temple. Well, they cleaned that. <laughs> Got a crane in there. <laughs> it's like those black mothers say, I'll slap the black right off of you. <laughs> and they did. They put him back up in gold. Well, over there in France, they're saying, hell, we ain't got enough money <laughs> to even take care of single parents. And the angel Moroni <laughs> can fend for himself. So anyway, I'll put another video up with a, uh, a link to it that'll tell you. I'm telling the truth. I'll show you a picture of the temple in France. The angel is gone. He did not have health in the navel, marrow in the bone, strength in the loins and in the sinews. Power and the priesthood be upon me and upon my posterity through all generations of time and throughout all eternity. The bard is gone.